Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Scott Young and I'm the Product Development Manager at Allo Computer Products. Today we're going to be looking at one of Grandstream's latest product releases, which is the WP820 and it's an enterprise portable Wi-Fi phone. Now before we do get started, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, do send them through the question and answer panel or through the messaging panel um, and I'll get to them um, either throughout the webinar or, or at the end of the webinar. Okay, today we're going to focus on an overview of the WP820. We'll have a quick look at some competitive analysis um, between some of the main Wi-Fi phone competition out there in the market. We'll have a look at, look at the design of the AP, uh, WP820, the feature highlights, some of the accessories that are included with the phone, and a quick look at some applications and also deployment scenarios. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, main specifications of the WP820. So it has a 2.4 inch color screen. It supports two SIP accounts. It has integrated dual band Wi-Fi, so it supports 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Now, one of the most important features here, especially with Wi-Fi phones, is the ability to support Wi-Fi roaming. It also supports push to talk and paging functionality. It has uh, support for HD audio codecs and also noise suppression technology. The phone also comes with a rechargeable lithium ion battery and has a talk time of around seven and a half hours and a standby time of 150 hours. Now, the phone has dual microphones one microphone for um, your voice and the second microphone is actually used for noise cancellation purposes. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Now the phone also has built in uh, Bluetooth. So it can support Bluetooth headsets and it can also be paired with your mobile phone. So it can sync contacts um, and you can also uh, transfer a mobile call to your WP820 call as well. So this, this is the audio functionality of the call can be pushed through to the WP820 or vice versa. Now the WP820 also has an accelerometer and gesture control functionalities as well. Now one of the uh, nice features is also the integration support with Grandstream's GDS door phones. So you can actually view the camera of the GDS on the WP820, and you can also open the door remotely via the WP820 as well. Okay, some of the feature highlights. So we'll look at the quality and build of the product. Uh, the phone is very easy to use and of course the portability aspect. As I um, focused on before, we also have the push to talk, um, allowing uh, push to talk from one to one, also one to many, and also the ability for paging as well for emergency notifications and things like that. Now the phone is also quite durable and can be has been tested um, to withstand a drop of around 1.2 meters. Now, the phone also um, is built around an Android platform, so you can actually install custom apps onto the phone. Now you would need to ensure that the app that you are using is suitable for the uh, 2.4 inch screen size. And lastly, we have the mobility functionality functionality which allows roaming between 
access points that support the roaming functionality. Okay, we'll have a quick look at the um, competitive analysis of the WP820. Um, and we'll look at some of the differences between the WP820 and some of the competitive phones out there on the market. So the main um, vendors out there at the moment are probably your, your Cisco and your Spectralink um, series IP phones. Um, they're the, the main two that we see in the Australian market. Now in terms of the features, I won't read through all of this and the differences. Um, now some of the, the key features of the WP820 is obviously the Bluetooth support, also the headset jack, um, and also the battery life of the WP820 as well. So if you're looking at the comparison between the WP820 and the Spectralink, for instance, um, you know, the standby time is almost double that of the Spectralink product. Now with the WP820 as well, it also has a few different uh, HD wideband codec options as well, including the Opus codec. Okay, we'll now take a look at the physical design of the phone. As you can see, there are a lot of physical features. Um, I won't go through all of these. I'll just mention a couple of the, of the standout features. So the, the WP820 has a proximity sensor. So one, one use here is when you do bring the WP820 to your ear to talk, it actually turns the screen off. So the um, phone doesn't get too hot on uh, next to your ear. We have the dedicated multi-function key, um, which by default is configured for the push to talk functionality, but it can also be um, configured for like a panic button or a man down type button. We have a dedicated hands-free or speaker key. Uh, there's a dedicated contacts key also to access your address book. And at the bottom of the phone as well, there's a micro USB port that can be used to, to charge the phone as well. Okay, we'll have a look at some of the main features of the WPA20. Okay, as I mentioned before, ooh. sorry about that guys. Animations on PowerPoint slides, they're a killer. Oop. All right, so we'll look. At, okay, doesn't want to pause for me. All right, so I'll just I'll just go over that slide. It keeps on um, jumping ahead, but it was just reiterating the Android Seven support. Um, built into the phone. Um, what else was there? Sorry. Okay, the dual band Wi-Fi, the push to talk functionality, and also the ability to integrate with Grandstream's GDS door phones as well, which is, which is a great feature, the integration with the GDS door phone, being able to have a, a portable phone that you can walk around with and then have the ability to actually uh, view a live video stream from a door phone and then be able to open the, open the door for that customer via a portable phone. So it's actually a, a really neat feature. Um, I'll look at some of the interfaces and ports here. So as I um, mentioned earlier, the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, the micro USB port that can be used to charge the phone, the 2.4 and 5 gig dual band Wi-Fi support, Bluetooth, the dual mics, and also the accelerometer. Okay, so the as I mentioned, the WP820 does have dual mics. So a mic at the front for 
when you're speaking into the um, WPA20 and then a mic at the back to suppress some of that background noise, um, especially if you're working in a warehouse or a retail environment or something like that with a lot of background noise, having that second mic to suppress those uh, noises is a, is a great feature. Okay, so the accelerometer and the gesture control features. So a lot of these uh, I haven't looked at or haven't seen yet. I've only got a beta version of the of the handset, so I haven't seen the functionality of this. Um, but so you can actually tap the screen to mute and unmute calls, and you can actually reject a call simply by placing the the phone face down on the on the table, which is a a great feature as well. Okay, now one of the most important features I think with Wi-Fi and using voice over Wi-Fi is the ability to actually roam between access points that you have laid out in your in your building. Now I've got problems with animation again there, so I do apologize. Now, the WPA20 does support all of the roaming protocols that you need to have a successful and, um, and working roaming capability on a Wi-Fi device. So the WPA20 supports 802.11k, R and V, and R is one of the fast roaming protocols, which is definitely necessary when you're using voice over Wi-Fi. Okay, QoS, another really important feature of using voice over a Wi-Fi network. So as we all know, Wi-Fi is typically a shared medium. Um, it's, it's primarily used for data applications, but now with the ability to roam and the higher speeds that you're able to achieve via Wi-Fi, um, you know, we can now implement voice solutions over Wi-Fi. Now one thing we need to make sure that we do do when we are using voice over Wi-Fi is to prioritize the voice traffic. Now most enterprise class access points will support what they call WMM, which is Wi-Fi Multimedia. And this is a QoS protocol built specifically for real-time applications over a Wi-Fi network. So perfect for SIP and also your, your RTP audio streams. Okay, so the built-in Bluetooth support. So I mentioned this earlier as well, but you know one of the main features here or main um, things to mention is the support for a Bluetooth headset. So we do, um, you know, everybody has a, a portable phone, they can walk around, but there's a lot of people out there that still don't like to have the phone up against their head. Um, so utilizing a Bluetooth headset um, gets rid of the need to do that. And also the ability here to sync contacts with your mobile phone as well. Okay, so the phone supports two SIP accounts. Um, having the um, ability to allow two lines or two SIP accounts to be registered on the phone um, allows you to support three-way audio conferencing on the phone as well. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, but the configuration of the phone is all done via a web GUI. So it does have a web GUI like a, a normal IP phone or a normal IP deck phone would have. So all configuration can be done via that web GUI. Um, and also a lot of the configuration can be done from the actual screen on the phone as well. So WP820 supports all your standard calling features, like call forwarding, speed dials, call transfers, both unattended and blind transfers. Um, now up to 10 speed dials can be configured on the phone. 
um, for quick and easy dialing of um, of commonly commonly used uh, phone numbers. Okay, so we also have support for uh, voicemail, of course, and SMS messaging. So it supports SIP based SMS messaging. So if you are using other devices on your um, voice network that supports SMS uh, text messaging, then this um, can be done with the WPA20 as well. Uh, we also have automatic lookup of call history and contacts as well. So as soon as you start dialing, if you do have a contact stored in your phone or you're looking at, or there is history of a call in your phone, once you start dialing a number, it will present you with a contact list of um, uh, contacts that uh, start with that number that you are dialing. Okay, push to talk. So the ability to be able to quickly and easily push a button and talk to your colleagues, a great feature to have for warehouse and retail applications. Now, as well as being able to do a push to talk from uh, a one-to-one -one based push to talk, we can also do a one-to-many push to talk as well. And also um, the support for paging which will be typically used for emergency notifications and, and things like that. Okay, as mentioned, the support for the WPA20 and the GDS door station, like I said earlier, this is a great feature. You know, normally a, a door phone, you know, the only way that you can actually view who's at the door or unlock the door um, is via a desk phone. But the ability to be able to see the video stream and also unlock the door from a portable phone, I think is, is, is great. Okay, so the, the battery, the long life battery in the WPA20, so it's got a 1500 milliamp hour capacity battery. Uh, the lithium ion battery, which um, improves the talk time and also the standby time, and it's a typical 3.8 volt lithium ion battery. Okay, looking at different ways of charging the WPA20. So, of course, we can charge from the uh, included uh, dock. Um, now, Grandstream also do have a eight-way charging uh, bay, which um, I don't have much information on yet, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's just a, um, a charging dock which can support up to eight batteries. It can all be charged simultaneously. And also charging can be done via the micro USB port on the bottom of the phone as well. All right, enhanced reliability and recover, recovery abilities. So as with a uh, majority of the Grandstream devices, they have a dual firmware um, system. So that if one firmware does become corrupt for some reason, you can roll back to the, to the failover firmware and, and keep the phone running. Uh, the phone can be upgraded or reset back to factory from uh, the keys or the hard keys on the phone or of course can be done via the web GUI. Now another great feature which I played with um, just yesterday actually is the system diagnostics on the phone. So you can actually test the screen, you can test the LEDs, you can test the speaker functionality, you can test the vibration functionality, you can test the accelerometer, all those different features can be easily tested and diagnosed straight from one of the apps on the, on the phone. So that's a, a great feature if you are having any issues with any of the functionality of the, of the phone. All right, we'll have a look at the accessories that are included with the WPA20. So of course we have the charging stand. Now the charging stand is, is, is a, good, a good stand. So it, you know, sometimes with, with cordless phones, the stands that come with it, either the, you know, the lip on the, on the stand that holds the phone is, 
the phone in is quite small and the phone can get knocked out quite easily. Um, but with the grand stream um, dock or the stand, it's, um, it's quite good. Now, it also comes with a belt clip, a small form factor power supply. Obviously, the one in the picture is a US version. Um, and also the lithium ion battery. Okay, just looking at the charging station again. Um, so obviously the phone will charge as soon as you plug it into the docking station. Now, if the phone is in the docking station and the, the phone does ring, as soon as you pick up the phone from the dock, it will answer the call. Um, and again, if you're not using the charging station, the WP820 can be charged via the USB port on the bottom of the phone. Belt clip, always a, ve a very handy feature, especially for those mobile workers and warehouse workers and even hospitality workers. So being able to um, connect the phone onto your belt is, is a great feature. There's a couple of pictures of the belt clip. As you can see also, it actually um, twists 360 degrees as well. Um, so you can have it a, a, um, you know, fitted to your belt on, you know, on any different angle. Okay, the GMC08 eight-way battery charger. So it can charge the batteries to three different capacity levels, either 30, 60, or 100%. Um, has built-in fans to dissipate the heat from the batteries. Also has eight independent LEDs to uh, let you know the status of the actual um, charge of the batteries. And also temperature control so they, we can actually turn on and activate the fans if the batteries do get too hot and it can actually turn off the charging mechanism if the battery does get to a certain temperature as well. Okay, applications and deployment scenarios. Okay, so some of the typical applications that we can um, see the use of the w WPA20 is for obviously office users, so people that are um, on the move in the office um, or people that are constantly away from their desk. WPA20 is a, is a perfect solution for that. Uh, hotels, residency buildings, um, as well as retail, I think as well. Um, and then, as I said, factory and warehouse, um, department stores, all great um, applications for WPA20. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the roaming functionality. And when we are talking about voice over Wi-Fi, if you're in a building that has multiple access points, if your access points don't support roaming, then if you move outside of the area where your Wi-Fi signal is reaching, then the call is obviously going to drop. So we need to make sure that the Wi-Fi deployment in your building is sufficient to support voice. Just as we need to make sure that the Wi-Fi is um, set up correctly for data applications. Um, you know, if, you, if you're deploying a Wi-Fi network in your building, you need to make sure that the Wi-Fi coverage um, is set up for everywhere where you need Wi-Fi. Now, when you are using multiple access points in a building, if you don't support uh, roaming on your devices, then when you do move out of that coverage zone of the access point that you are connected to, then the call will drop. Um, so that's obviously something that we don't want to happen. And when we're configuring access points for voice deployments, we need to make sure that all the access points are using the same SSID. Now we need to remember that, that on most access points, SSIDs are case sensitive. The IP address that gets assigned to the WPA20, whether it's coming from a built-in DHCP server on one of the access points or whether it's coming from an access point on your um, DHCP server on your, on your network, 
we need to make sure that all the access points, excuse me, and the clients are on the same IP subnet and also the same VLAN. If you are on, you know, if some of the access points are on different uh, IP subnets or different VLANs, then roaming will not work. Now, you know, the, the typical authentication method for wireless these days is um, WPA or WPA2. Now, you need to make sure that the access points are set up with the same authentication method on all APs and clients. And when configuring multiple access points in a deployment, you need to make sure that when you, you go out and install your access points, you need to make sure that the AP signals actually overlap each other. If they don't overlap and there's a gap in the Wi-Fi signal, obviously when you roam between those access points, you're gonna have either call dropouts or call disconnection. So you need to make sure that the Wi-Fi signal is set up appropriately on your network, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, now just quickly, I'm going to have a um, just run through some of the differences um, that I see between Wi-Fi and DECT deployments. As we all know, DECT is a typical uh, wireless uh, protocol used for um, cordless phones. Now, some of the limitations with DECT are that DECT only supports around eight handsets on most deck base stations. Now, if you are using a multi-cell deck solution, then that's that's not true. It actually supports more if you are using multi-cell, but multi-cell deck solutions are very expensive. Now, when we talk about Wi-Fi access points, you know, some of the latest model access points, you know, they can support up to hundreds of users. You know, some of the latest two by two uh, Wave 2 MIMO access points actually support up to 450 clients per single access point. You know, so the number of, of devices that you can support on a Wi-Fi network is far more superior than a DECT solution. Now, as with DECT, uh, Wi-Fi networks need to be configured correctly in your infrastructure. The same with DECT as well. You know, if you're if you're rolling out a multi-cell DECT solution, you need to make sure that the the DECT base stations are set out in your or in your building appropriately to cover all areas. Um, and the same thing with Wi-Fi. And the best way to do that is definitely by using a site survey, doing a site survey. Now, one another uh, great feature on the WPA20 is it actually has the signal strength meter on the phone. So you can actually use the WP820 to do your site surveys when you when you are determining how many access points you need to roll out on a on a customer's premise. Another advantage of using Wi-Fi over DECT is that it is a single setup for both data and Wi-Fi. So how many buildings do you go into now that don't have Wi-Fi? You know, just about every building, every business has a Wi-Fi network of some sort. Now, if they are, like, if they are going to use cordless phones, why not utilize the Wi-Fi network that you already have there? You know, otherwise, if you do go for a DEC solution, then you need to go out and you need to, if you are using, especially if you're using multi-cell and you need to cover a big area, then you need to roll out multiple deck base stations across your building as well as Wi-Fi. So why not utilize the Wi-Fi network that's already there? Um, however, like I said previously, if you are going to be sharing data and voice on a Wi-Fi network, you need to make sure that you are using QoS um, to prioritize that voice traffic over your data traffic. Okay, so that's just about it with the WPA20. I just want to finish off with the actual product availability. So the official launch 
for the WP820 um, is tomorrow, US, uh, sorry, yeah, tomorrow, US time, so 27th of September. Um, turned out to be great timing for this webinar, actually. Um, now, in terms of stock, so we will have NFR stock available around the second week of October. So we've got a great NFR price available for the resellers. Um, so the NFR price for the WPA20 is going to be $105, whereas your normal reseller buy for the WPA20 will be around the $230 mark. Now, because we do have a limited NFR stock available, it will be limited to two phones per reseller. Um, so as I said, limited stock. So make sure you do get in quick if you do want to test uh, the WPA20 phones. Okay, questions. Let me just quickly go back to my slide here. All right, guys, do we have any questions? I haven't had anyone send through any questions yet, but um, if you do have any questions, please do let me know. Okay, nobody has any questions. Let's give you give you guys a couple more minutes just in case if you do think of anything. Okay, Michael, do these work with 3CX? Okay, so they're not officially supported by 3CX at this stage, but I'm sure Grandstream and 3CX will work on that ASAP. So obviously being not supported doesn't mean they won't work. So they definitely do work. I'm running uh, my WP20 here in the office on 3CX and have been for for several um, several weeks. So definitely no issues running it on 3CX, just not yet officially supported. Okay, Mark, does it go to sleep? So in terms of going to sleep, you mean turning the screen off and things like that? Then yes, it does. Um, so it will save battery um, by going to sleep. Okay, Larry, roaming on a Cisco Wi-Fi, similar scenario, does the unit support AP handover? So as long as, so the WPA20 does support roaming protocols. So it as long as the Cisco AP support at a 2.11 K, R, and or V, then there should be no issues roaming between uh, Cisco access points. Uh, Michael, does your SMS only allow you to SMS people on your VoIP network? Yeah, it's it's SIP based SMS messaging, so it's not going to go out to a mobile mobile phone or anything like that. But if you've got a network set up with offices, you know, SIP trunks and things between phone systems across um, between offices, then as long as the, um, the the SIP traffic is able to traverse across and between those offices, then you should be able to SMS people. Um, as long as the devices they're using also support SIP-based SMS messaging. Uh, Mark, so when it does go to sleep, so when the screen turns off, will it go offline? No, it won't. So obviously it stays registered um, to the phone system, so um, it will wake itself back up when it receives a call. Yeah, so it, won't, it doesn't go completely offline. Okay, Larry, will there be a model template? Um, not understanding exactly what you're meaning by that. Uh, 
Oh, zero config. Okay, so yeah, so it, there will definitely be a, a, a template file for the WPA20. Now, I haven't seen one yet, as we know, it's, all just, it's only getting released tomorrow. So I haven't seen a template for it yet, but Grantstrom have templates for all their phones, so I'm sure there will be. Mark, what's the process for NFR? Just come and talk to us. Um, either call your LOE account manager um, and they'll be able to organise an NFR for you. Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, we'll finish up here. All right, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you um, allowing time um, to listen to the presentation today. And if you do have any further questions after the web webinar, please do um, contact your LO account manager and they'll be able to help you out. And also, if you do want a copy of the presentation or the recording, it will be available on the Allo website um, either later today or worst case, it will be Monday. Okay, guys, once again, thank you. I do appreciate your time. Thank you.